Welcome to Module 3, Learning and Experience Curve. Let's understand what is learning curve. Learning curve is nothing but a graphical representation which depicts the decrease in average labor cost in repetitive operations as the employees obtain more learning. Observe this as the employees obtain more learning. That is, when an employee is introduced to the task for the first time. That is, when an employee is manufacturing a product for the first time, he will start learning it and that's why the time required to produce that product will be more. As and when he performs the same task, when he repetitively perform the same task and produce the product, so the time taken for him to produce a product reduces. That is, average labor cost reduces, but the productivity increases. That is, the time taken for, for producing the product reduces, the production or productivity increases. So that is nothing but learning curve. That is, when any person starts learning, then the productivity increases, the average time taken to produce a product decreases. That is nothing but learning curve. Let's understand now the phases of learning curve. There are three phases of learning curve. That is first phase, second phase and the third phase. Well, first phase is also known as slow beginning. Second phase is known as steep. Third phase is known as plateau. Before understanding the meaning of this, Let's see the curve. Here you can observe the curve. First, it is slow beginning. Slow beginning in the sense when an employee is performing a task for the first time. That is when he is producing the product for the first time. He starts learning how to manufacture a product. So that's why the time taken for him will be more. So learning will be more and also the time taken will be more. So that's why the curve here is slow beginning. The performance of the employee will be slow. Next, after he starts learning how to manufacture a product, then he, he starts learning still more and that's why the learning curve is steep. That is, the performance curve is steep. So, he starts gaining more knowledge and when he starts doing the work for a repetitive time, then obviously the performance increases. That's why the curve here is showing is steep. Then, as I told you, in the steep stage, he becomes master over it or he gains the proficiency. So, after he gains the proficiency or he becomes a master over it, then he reaches a stage called plateau. Plateau in the sense which is very flat. That is, there is no much scope for further learning because he already has mastered over it and there is no much scope for further learning. So, he reaches a stage called plateau. So, here his learning speed will be less because there is no further thing to learn much more. And even if there is a further thing to learn, he, he would have reached already one stage. So, he will not gain or he will not put more effort to learn further more to reach 100% or more than 100%. He will not put much effort. That's why this stage is called as plateau. So, now let's understand about this. As I told you, with the introduction and implementation of a new technique, high rates of conversion, that is slow beginning occurs. When an employee is introduced for a new technique, a slow beginning occurs. In the second stage, the steep portion of the curve correlates with rapid learning and ends with the proficiency. So first, in the second stage, after the slow beginning, he will learn and he rapidly learns all the things and ends with the proficiency. So, after he reaches the proficiency, he reaches to the third phase. Third phase is plateau where no further improvements are achieved. That is the last stage, that is the plateau stage. Now, let us understand the formula to calculate the learning curve. Learning curve ratio is equal to average labor cost of first two units divided by average labor cost of first unit. Well, you have to take the average of the labor cost of first unit, first two units of production divided by the average labor cost which is taken to produce the first unit. You would get a learning curve ratio. Now, let us understand this uh, with an example. Well, uh, uh, if the learning curve ratio, which is already given the question is 80% and the time taken to produce the first unit is 10 hours, 
the average hours required to produce the successive units is shown below just for the understanding purpose let's see the example well the learning curve ratio here is given as 80 percent the first unit that is the time taken to produce first unit is eight sorry 10 hours then the average hours required to produce the subsequent hours is shown here so let us see the example so here the number of units is given like 1 2 4 8 16 and all so let's see the average time taken as per the question for producing one product the time taken is 10 hours so cumulative time is nothing but the number of units into average time you get the cumulative time used okay so to produce 10 to produce one product that average time is 10 hours so let's see for the next successive product to produce the two products let's see the time taken is 8 how do we get this 8 is as we know the learning curve ratio is 80 percent so take the average time into learning curve ratio we will get the average time taken to produce the subsequent subsequent unit here 10 is nothing but the average time of the preceding unit into 80 percent we get 8 let me tell you the next example if you have taken 8 into 80 percent you got 6.4 next is 6.4 into 80 percent sorry 6.4 into 80 percent we get 5.12 again 5.12 into 80 percent we get 4.096 and so on so this is how we calculate the average time per unit so you can get the cumulative time use just by multiplying the number of units into average time per unit you get the cumulative time used let's move on with the next topic that is the graphical representation of the learning curve till now we discussed about the phases of learning curve let's see the graphical representation of how a learning curve looks so learning curve looks like this that is the average time per unit is given in the y-axis and cumulative volume of production that is the volume of production is given in the x-axis you can observe the learning curve here so here the initial stage the average time taken to produce a product will be high and as the time goes on as the employee learns how to produce a product the time taken gradually reduces but the production increases as the production increases as the employee learns more and more the time taken to produce the product goes on decreasing this is nothing but the learning curve now let us move on with the next topic that is learning curve applications that is let's understand in which areas that the learning curve is applied so first and foremost this is uh, pricing decisions to take the pricing decision in the sense to fix the price the learning curve is also used well uh, as we know that the labor cost can be known by the learning curve and cost is a most important aspect of fixing a price that is how the learning curve is indirectly used in the pricing decision the next is direct cost and the standard cost direct cost or the standard cost is actually linked to the manufacturing cost so as we know the labor cost being one among the direct cost so it is also used in order to fix the price in the sense that learning curve is also a part of the labor cost nothing but the direct cost so indirectly the learning curve is also used in calculating the direct cost as well as standard cost as well as fixing the prices so let's understand the next one that is the training so training in the sense as you know as an employee is given with the training his learning improves and the productivity improved, improves so that's why to measure how much training to be given for an employee to increase his productivity the learning curve is applied and also to fix the pay scales not every person performs the task in the same way so to fix the pay scales that is either the wages or the salary so learning curve is used how fast the employee learns based on that the employer can fix the employee salary the next is the motivation so motivation is also one major aspect of the learning curve so that is if an employee is highly motivated then the learning curve that is his performance will be very high so learning curve is also applied even in the motivation the overtime decision overtime decision in the sense so an employer can decide whether an employee should do an overtime work or not 
so whether it has to it has to appoint other persons from the outside or it has to give for an employee to do the ot facilities or not how this can be followed is if a person is good at performing the task and if he is taking lesser time to perform the task then ot can be given to the employees that is how the learning curve applies in the overtime decisions so let me just repeat in the pricing decision nothing but to fix the price learning curve is used to calculate the direct cost to calculate and to set the standard cost the learning curve is used and to decide how much training to be given to the employees learning curve is used to fix the pay scales according to the learning of employees the learning curve applications i mean learning curve is used then motivation so each and every employee's motivation level would be different learning skills would be different so learning curve is also used in providing the motivation to the employees based on his skills then the overtime decision so whether the ot facility should be given or not can also be dependent on this learning curve so now let's understand the next topic that is the factors affecting learning curve so let's see what are the factors will affect when you wanted to apply this learning curve the first and foremost while pricing for bids when the pricing is based on the bid so it is generally a tendency for any company to fix the high initial labor cost so that if we it fix the high initial labor cost then it shows the high learn, learning curve at the initial stage just to hype the bid price it is a tendency for any company to fix the bid price at a very high level by showing the high initial labor cost so that's why in this cases the learning curve initially shows the high learning curve the next is the method of production so method of production in the sense you have to look into your uh, company that whether it is labor oriented or machine oriented so it depends that is the curve depends on whether it is labor oriented or machine oriented if it is labor oriented the employees require more time to perform the task to know about how to perform a task whereas if it is machine oriented then it depends if it is a simpler machine then the employee can learn how to perform the machine very fast so it depends that is the curve depends on whether it is labor oriented or machine oriented the next one is learning curve applies for stable working conditions well this curve naturally applies for the stable working condition but if there is a lots of lockdown or strikes or shutdown and all then the learning curve affects that is the slow beginning and the steep and then plateau will not be there if there is more strikes lockdowns happening in a company the next is changes in product or methods of production or design or machines affects the slope of learning curve so that is if there is different if there is continuous changes in the methods of production used or the design patterns of the product then the learning becomes necessary that is for each and every step the employee has to perform the task by knowing the design knowing the different methods of production or knowing about the machine so therefore the time taken for taking the time taken for him to produce a product it will be different therefore it will be more therefore the learning curve differs the next is the degree of motivation that is I, as i already told you in the last slide the degree of motivation for each employee differs so that the learning curve also differs so let's move on with the next separate topic that is experience curve till now we have discussed about the learning curve let's move on with the experience curve well we got to know that learning curve is nothing but it is concentrating on the labor cost that is to reduce the labor cost well experience curve it is a broader term than the learning curve experience curve concentrate on the overall cost learning curve concentrate only on labor cost experience curve concentrate on the overall cost well this was introduced by uh in the year 1960 by bruce henderson and the boston consulting group well these companies experienced the cost reductions that is the experience curve concentrate on these costs that is labor efficiency specialization and standardization better resource allocation research development and technological effects as i told you 
well uh, learning curve is only concentrating on the labor cost but experience curve concentrates on what is the labor efficiency how is the specialization and standardization among the employees how well the resources are allocated for the better use how is our research and development is performing and how is the technological effect on the productivity all these things will be concentrated by the experience curve so now let's understand the differences between the learning curve and experience curve the learning curve as i told you it is a graphical representation which shows the decrease in the labor cost and also uh, which is resulting because of the repetitive operations as the employees obtain more learning that is when an employee is performing or learning more and more the average labor cost decreases this is what the learning curve says whereas experience curves says that it always depicts the overall cost saving as the production grows here this concentrates only on labor cost here it concentrates on the overall cost as the production grows in volume the next difference is that savings from learning curve effect is primarily used for forecasting the labor cost whereas here it it is a broader term and it have a strategic volume so that is here it focus only on the labor cost here its forecast is for the strategic value of an entire organization whereas uh, labor cost is just one part in its strategic value the other difference is that it depicts the reduction in labor cost it depicts the overall cost reduction while it is micro in nature and as i told you this is macro in nature well that's all about the learning curve and experience curve thank you